Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new 4-in-1 ESC and this is from Hobbywing. It's called the X Rotor Micro 40 Amp 4-in-1 ESC. Now what we're going to be doing today is just taking a look at it, seeing its specs and also doing the noise testing on to seeing how well this thing does. So looking at it, it's a pretty nice clean board and it does have some pretty crazy things here if you take a look, closer look at it actually. Um, you see that it'll have a 5 volt, 12 volt and a 3.3 volt pads here which are right here in the corner. Each one is rated for something so that's pretty crazy here. Uh, that's one thing to take note of that um, I, I saw which I thought was pretty unique actually because I haven't seen anything do something like this in a, in a while actually. Usually it's either a 5 and a 12 or a 5 or just a 12 but this has everything in here so that's just crazy. All right, so let's just take a look at some of the things that it comes with. So they do provide you with two silicone JSC type connectors. This side is for the current sensing VBAT and ground. So there's two grounds, a VBAT and the current sensor in here because this 4-in-1 EC does have current sensing here. So that's good in that perspective. This side here, it would be just basically the uh, five volt and your motors as well as ground. Uh, that's what that would be used for. So yeah, these are your ESC signal wires would be right here and five volt if you want to power off your uh, flight controller or some of that nature. And here, as you can see here, we do have some pins kind of like the uh, DYS style here. However, you know, this does have its own uh, flight controller from Hobbywing, which you could just stick on and you're good to go. Everything's right there. Um, I will be purchasing it because I really want to test out the whole layout, but today I've just gone ahead and treated it as a normal 4-in-1 ESC since we are able to use it as a regular 4-in-1 ESC and we're going to see how well it performs. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the specs here. Now they're stating it's a 40 amp um, constant current and a 50 amp burst, but they're not stating for how long. And we could easily do that looking up the MOSFET status sheets and uh, yeah, that's how we would know that. It takes 2 to 5 S LiPo and you know, overall, I mean, it's a BL Heli S, so it's, not a, it's not a BL Heli 32, so don't mistake this for a BL Heli 32 ESC. It's just a normal BL Heli S D-Shot 600 ESC here. And um, the overall, you know, execution, it looks like a nice board. Um, I really can't complain. I wish, I don't know, I'm looking at the filtration here. Uh, should possibly be able to handle this little nice array. I've seen, I've seen, you know, ESCs with a lot more caps here that do help um, reduce noise, but we never really know because don't forget this even also comes with a low ASR capacitor. They do provide you with a proper Rubicon uh, capacitor here, which is this guy right here. It's a 470 25 volt low ASR capacitor from Rubicon. So that's, that's very good. That's always good to have. So you'd probably, so some people actually keep asking me, how do I install a low ESR capacitor? Very simple. The point where your battery is connected. So you got your XC connector. If it's connected to these two right here, that's where you're gonna install it with these two wires. So how do you know which side is which? Well, all capacitors basically work the same here. Look for a line that has a minus. Oh, there's a line that has a minus. So this would be your negative. So negative is the ground, ground is the black. So you just put them together like so. So you put the ground together here and the positive on the positive part. And then that's it, you know, that's it. it should be right there because it just goes in, cleans out the stuff that's coming in and out. And then you should keep your overall system very clean, very tidy and very well for your all, for all your components here. You know, enough talking and let's get started. Alright guys, so how did this one do? This one actually did pretty good actually. Um, it, there was no uh, inst like just crazy spikes. It was holding all of its phases absolutely correct. And it kind of reminds me of when you set a D-Shot 1200 ESC to uh, 48 kilohertz. It starts catching all the phases absolutely beautiful, thus reducing the amount of noise because, you know, the noise is more into the frequency. So for example here, we have, let's just say these four squares right here. And if it's just going like this, like a heartbeat, it's very predictable, you know? It's just going like this, just going like that. That is a good thing to see because that means it's just doing perfect. 
However, if you see it going like this and, and going the same pattern and just doing something weird, that's what you don't want to see because that's something going on wrong. You're having these weird, you know, out of phase moments where the voltage rushes back in, gets sucked back out. That's what leaks into regulators and hits your VTX or hits your camera. So you don't want to see very close, like for, for example, in each square here, these four squares, we just have basically one curve like this. That is something very good to see. But if you see like just it going like this, like maybe 10 in each square, then that's high frequency noise. So higher frequency noise is what you don't want. You want it just to be nice, predictable. You will have your every once in a while voltage spikes, but that's something normal. But um, yeah, this performed very well, actually. Um, you know, it's a bit expensive. It's actually hella expensive. And um, I don't know how it'll test in real life, but from here in the benching, it's testing like... A good ESC that I have put on uh, 48 kilohertz on BL Heli 32. So that in that perspective, I'm pretty impressed. Um, you know, Hobby Wing, this actually reminds me of another one I've tested. I think, I could be wrong. I think this is a rebranded OEM from Flycolor. Uh, it's the same kind of design. I could see it here, but they have little extras done to it that they probably requested. But it's just almost exactly, even the amperage is about the same. Um, I do have that board. I think we put it on a quad. I don't remember where we put it. I will be checking that one's MOSFETs and the overall, overall board layout and see if I notice anything kind of in the same area or they're very similar because that board tested very beautiful and uh, this board tested also very beautiful. And looking at it, just, you know, this, you know every it's crazy. Every manufacturer has their own design. Like I can tell when a, a ESC is made from AirBot and you could tell when an ESC is made from um, fly color. So this is kind of that whole thing. I could kind of see it in here. I could be totally wrong, but um, I'm, I'm, we'll just say I'm 72% certain that it's probably from fly color and fly color does very, very good ESCs. Uh, they've been in this market for a very long time. So if it is an OEM brand, just expect it to be a good one. But, you know, just, just drop the price down quite a bit more because it's pretty damn expensive. Um, but overall, it's a good ESC so far here on the bench testing. I don't know how it'll perform in real life. We're going to have to stick it on something very soon. And um, if anyone's used it, please let us know down in the comments section. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I hope I helped you guys. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.